Hi everyone! In this video tutorial, I'll show you how to sublimate images onto the Hobby Lobby metal tags. I'll demonstrate two techniques. The first will be using the white HTV glitter vinyl from Caesar America, and the second will be using the Scotch thermal lamination pouches. So please stay tuned as I show you how to set up your document for printing and then using a heat press make these one of a kind ornaments and gift tags. So let me share with you how I set up my document. I'm using Photoshop CC 2020. Any graphics program should do the same job. And I've created a brand new document, 300 dpi with a white background, 8.5 uh, by 11 inches. Now I went ahead and I measured my tag and it is 4 inches by 2.5 inches. So what I've done is created rectangles that are 4.2 by 2.7 and this will give me enough margin or a bleed to place the tag on top of the image and then use that rectangle as my guide for alignment. And it also helps me compose the image to put inside the tag. So you can see here I've gone ahead and made up four tags and I've tried to do a variety of them. We'll do a couple just on the plain metal with the lamination and then I'll also do a couple with um, the white HTV glitter that looks really really cute. So the only thing that you really need to consider is that the tag will taper at the edges here and will also have a hole. So I know that the hole for the tag is going to fall on top of this image but I'm okay with that. It's just a, you know a floral graphic. But if you were doing a photograph obviously you wouldn't want that to fall you know onto somebody's head or their face or anything that you would want obscured from the tag so that's something to consider and then there's another tip before I send these off to the printers that I thought I'd share with you it's not absolutely necessary but it does add a nice touch to the graphic so I'm going to click on this image of the snowman now this is an SVG but PNG files would also work for this and what I'm going to do is add some uh, effects to it. So I'll double click on my layer and this will bring up the effects panel and I'm going to add a drop shadow and you can see that almost lifts it off the page so it gives it a little bit more dimension and then I'm going to add a bevel and emboss and this will help smooth out some of the edges. So I think that just adds a nice look to it. Again, it's a personal preference. You don't have to do that, but I thought I would share that tip with you. So these are all set to be sent off to the printer. And I do use an Epson Workforce 7720 that has been converted for sublimation printing. I'll put all the details about the printer and the supplies that I've used in the description box below. So let me get this printed and then we'll get on to the next step. Okay, so I'm out at my heat press and I have it heated up to 365 degrees. And the first tag that we'll work on is the HTV white glitter. Now there is no lamination on the tag. We're using the vinyl as the laminate. So I've got it face up, glitter face up and I've placed that between a piece of parchment paper and then I'm just going to tack it down for 15 seconds. Now these settings are based on the recommendations from Caesar America and I found that this works out really well. It takes 15 seconds, the vinyl will adhere very well to the tag. You'll see that here in just a second. Remove the carrier sheet, that's very important, and just discard that. And then just let this cool for a few minutes. And like I said, that excess vinyl will adhere to the parchment paper. So using either a craft knife or a pair of scissors, just cut away that excess paper and then that piece of parchment paper on the back of the tag will just fall away. And then I'm using a temporary adhesive. This is the Sulky brand 
and it's just something I had on hand from my machine embroidery days. There are lots of um, adhesives available on the market, so whatever your preference is. So I've just put a light spray on top of the print and then using that rectangle I'm going to place my tag on top of it. That way I know that everything is lined correctly. And then I'm using parchment paper again, but you can use butcher paper, copy paper, whatever your preference. And it will be print side up. And then I will go ahead and sublimate this at 365 for 60 seconds. And there he is, cute, glittery, shiny snowman. How adorable is that? I just love sublimation on the, the white glitter. I think it looks really, really cool. So I'm going to set him aside and let it cool down. And then the next batch that I'm going to do, I use the Scotch Thermal Laminating Pouches. It's important that this is the thermal ones. And I've already um, prepared these ahead of time. So I took four of my tags, placed them inside one of the pouches, sublimated them, I'm sorry, put them under the heat press for 60 seconds, flipped it over, did it again for 60 seconds, let them thoroughly cool down, and then I went ahead and trimmed away the excess. So I'm just going to use the same process as I did for the snowman. I've applied the adhesive to the print then I'm going to align the tag on top of the print. And just having that rectangle as my guide really, really helps. You could also use heat tape if you prefer, or if you have a real steady hand, you don't even have to use anything to adhere it to the print. So again, that's going to be print side up, and I'm just going to put a piece of paper on top of this parchment paper as it's starting to curl up a little bit. And then I'll press that one for 60 seconds. Now, if your print is, or your sublimation is not coming out dark enough, you could increase the press time to 90 seconds, or you could increase the temperature, but I wouldn't go above 400 degrees. Doesn't that look fantastic? I just love the way these photos look on the distressed metal. It's really, really nice. Okay, so here are the tags all completed. So let's go ahead and take a closer look and we'll look at just the plain um, the lamination against the plain metal. So you can see these come out really, really nice. So we'll start with looking at the clip art one, and that came out lovely. Those colors are very nice, very pronounced, and that looks really nice against the distressed metal. And then we'll take a closer look at the photograph one. That also came out beautiful, and I do like the distressed metal in there too. And it just has a lovely shimmer to it, so I think those look very nice. Now let's take a closer look at the ones that we did with the HTV glitter. So here we've got that cute little snowman and he came out lovely. The colors are very vibrant. And then the little, you know, the couple here that look like they're right for a walk in the snow. And then of course I do need to deal with the, the hole, this part right here to cut that away. Now there's a couple of ways you can deal with that. Now I must admit, on the plain laminate ones, those are the most difficult to cut. It's very hard to get a clean cut. You can do, you can try it with an X-Acto knife, but you'll get this rough edge. But the X-Acto knife works great on the glitter. If you have a craft punch that is, you know, the right size for this hole, like one of those leather punches, or one of these eyelet setters, this is what I've been using. 
this one, you know, it's back to my scrapbooking days, but it does come with an assortment of sizes. You can see these right here, and I just attach them to this tool and then I can punch that out. And that will give you a much cleaner look to the finished tag. So these are the four examples that I showed to you today. Now the one that I didn't get to demonstrate was if you wanted just a, a solid white background. I just didn't have a tag prepared. But what you would do before you put the lamination on there, you need to spray it with a high heat paint. Now I've had great success with this. This is the Rust-Oleum High Heat. It goes up to 1200 degrees and is designed specifically for metal. Um, <clears throat> you need to do this in a well ventilated place and I let mine dry overnight just to be you know, safe. And it is, um, it is smelly, so you definitely have to do it outside or in a well ventilated area. And if you have a mask, wear that or you know, you, you know, just take precautions. But I've had very good results with this paint on these metal tags. And this cost me five bucks at Home Depot, so it's not very expensive either. So just keep that in mind if you want a solid white background. Some people have asked about just using the plain white HTV. That will not work because it doesn't have a polyester backing on it. You can leave the, the cover of that on there, but you know that could peel off later on down the road. So I would suggest that, that the white paint is your best option. The glitter, however, is polyester. So once you press that and you can remove the carrier sheet, then you can press the image onto that. So that will work out perfectly. So those are the examples that we did today. And let me show you some other examples. This was a really cute, I like this one here with the Santa gnome with his gingerbread, that's very cute. And this one right here, this is, um, actually let's take a look at these side by side. So here we've got the glitter HTV, and this one is just the lamination on the metal and comes straight through, so that looks really nice too. And this is when I was practicing with the tags. And here's another one just with clip art. Comes out really, really nice. And then the last one I'll show you today is um, my husband had asked me to make a tag for one of his friends, a military guy. So I went ahead and got the graphic, and you can tell this is the boo-boo one, so this is the one I'm showing you today. And wherever there was white, I went ahead and removed the white so that the silver could show through. And this looks very, very nice. And then I did a flood of the blue, he's in the Air Force, so I did a flood of the blue in the background. Um, and the reason I'm showing this one is the boo-boo is I was doing a whole bunch at once of the tacks, just doing the lamination and putting them aside. Now they were not completely cool. They weren't, they weren't hot, but they were still somewhat warm. And I wanted to bring them back into the house to trim away all the excess. Well, I started stacking them on top of each other. And you may not be able to see this on the camera, but there's an imprint of one of the circle ornaments that I had been doing, had, has embedded into the laminate. I tried repressing it and it wouldn't come out, so I just went ahead and made a different one. So I wanted to show you that just so you could be aware of, aware of that and not waste them like I have done here. So that was the, the last tag, but you can see you can use these for many different things. And then I just want to give you um, uh, an overview here of the product that I did use. So this was the, the scotch and it must be the thermal laminating pouches or you can buy them in rolls as well, but the, these pouches are readily available. So you just take one of the pouches, and they can be a little tricky to separate, but I just open it up, and the outside will be glossy, the inside has a slight texture to it. The textured side is the part that adheres to the metal. And then what I do is I can get about four of them in there comfortably, do that, and then put them in the heat press. Now, normally when I do the lamination, I'll do that for uh, 400 degrees for 60 seconds. That works out perfect. You can get away at a lower temperature, or if you prefer, you can put it through the lamination machine itself. That works. Um, the only drawback, because I did try doing that, is I don't feel like it gets a really tight seal to the metal. But you can try it and see what your results are. 
So that's the product I use for the lamination. Okay, so let's have a quick look at all these tags again. I love the photo on the metal, looks lovely. And again, it doesn't have to be tags, it can just be anything that's metal. And these were a great bargain. I think it was 24 or 25 tags for $4.99, I believe, at Hobby Lobby. I bought these a while back, so I don't know if they're still available. But you can see lots of design opportunities for these, and you can use them for the holidays, obviously, or any, any gift giving, really. Um, you know, we've got a lot of holidays coming up here. It's a great way to look for something a bit more on the masculine side if you want. You know, like this, um, this one was a perfect example of that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. And if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I hope you choose to do so. Don't forget to click on the notification bell so that you'll be notified of future videos. And until next time, thanks for watching.